actual connections you can see in a physical topology. Logical topology is like how traffic will be flowing in your network, right? If you see, this is a kind of logical topology. This is not a physical topology. Here I can see how traffic will be passing. See guys, this is a kind of uh, sample I am showing you of a physical topology. Like here you can see we have one ASA firewall, ASA3, ASA2, ASA4. They are physically connected on a switch. And here you can see ESXi server is connected. And here you can see one terminal server is connected, right? So we take an access to a terminal server. Through terminal you will get into a switches. And through switches you will get into a firewall. That's how you get into the interfaces of the firewall where it is connected on the switch, right? So here you can find the connectivity of a switch. But individually if you want to get into a firewall console, then you have to get into a terminal server. So first of all, what we have to do, we are creating one rack. In this rack, I want three routers, two switches, and this is one 40 gate firewall. Okay. This is next generation firewall, latest we have purchased right now. So this is 40 gate firewall. We are creating this rack right now. So that will connect all these uh, routers and the firewalls and behind this firewall, all the devices will be connected. I mean, firewall will be controlling your internet plus your internal devices. I mean, we have LAN zone and we have WAN zone and we'll put a DMZ zone as well. In DMZ, we'll put our ESXi server. ESXi servers, which you guys are taking RDP access, right? Mm -hmm. Those servers, big servers, right? We'll put in a DMZ zone. So total three zones will be there. LAN zone, WAN zone, and DMZ zone. And we'll configure policies, what traffic we should allow and what traffic we should not allow. That type of entire setup we are going to do here. That is the entire task, okay? Plus, we are going to use this room as a knock room. Okay, so knock will basically use for network monitoring. Okay, so we'll see how actual network traffics are flowing and what type of traffics are hitting our network, right? What type of applications are coming? How many users are connected? How much bandwidths are utilized, right? Everything we can monitor. So such type of, you know, configurations will be doing, entire setup will do plus uh, multiple monitors will be there where we can monitor with multiple applications. When you go in a real time, right? When you guys work as a NOC or a SOC team, right? That time, you'll see, you know, different softwares that will be used for monitoring purpose, right? So our main intention here is we'll uh, install those uh, real live softwares, we'll integrate with the real rack itself, and we'll see how the real network traffics are flowing so that you guys can understand how real network works, right? And monitoring and all everything will be doing. So to start this entire setup, first of all, we have to test all these devices, right? So what you all have to do in two, three groups, you guys take one router, one switch. So these are the devices, connect them with console cable, take a console access. Do you know how to take a console access? You guys know how to take a console access? You know Putty software, right? Yes. So after we'll help you guys. Okay, take one router and take console cable and connect with power. See, I'll just show you here. You guys follow the same. Please connect all, all of you. So just power on one device. One of you guys connect with your console. Let's check. Okay. Take one router. Take one router. Put one power cable here. In a router itself. See, this is console cable. Okay. See, in this console cable, you guys see this is serial port. 
serial to RJ45. In today's PC, we don't have this type of port, serial port. Earlier, it used to come, right? So now what we do is we use this connector, okay? So this is an extension and this is cable, okay? So with this extension, now we can see we converted it in, into USB. So USB to RJ45 console cable. Now this dongle which you see, it has a driver. I mean, you have to install the driver. Then only you can get access to the communication port. We call it as a COM port, communication port. That will be enabled only when you install it. But this is by default included in your Windows 10 or Windows 11 type of operating systems. Okay. So first of all, you can see on a screen right now. Okay. I'll open device manager. You guys can take a note. Okay. Same thing. You have to follow again. So first of all, you guys will open okay. device manager. Okay. In a device manager, you have to go with the COM port. You see, you see here COM port or L, L, LPT port, right? So come here. Right now, when I'll insert this cable, you'll see one new serial to, I mean, COM port will be formed. Okay. You see it refreshed. Do you see USB serial COM port it came? And what is the communication port number? 13. Right. This port we have to connect with software. So what is that software called? So we'll use PuTTY software. In this PuTTY software, you have SSH, serial and others. Right. So we'll go with serial option. And what was the port number? 13. And what is the default speed used by communication port? 9600. And there is one more option that you should select. That is click on serial. In a serial, you see flow control is there. Okay. Turn it off. Make it none. Okay. Where did I go? I, I clicked on serial. In a serial, I went to flow control. In a flow control, I made it none. Right. Take a note. Okay. See, if you don't select this, right, none, sometimes you won't get a proper CLI access, zigzag, zigzag type of screen will appear. Okay. Sometimes you see, right, when you connect your console, you don't get a proper text. Okay, you don't get a proper console itself. Sometimes it gives you zigzag type of screen itself. So that happens when these features are enabled. So we turn it off. So click on session again. See at the session we see serial port speed, right? Now click on open. If I'm connected with any router console, am I connected with any router console? Now see, have you turned on any router? Okay. Turn it off, turn it off. This router makes too much noise. Turn on this router. Okay, connect this. See, in a router, we have a console port. You guys can see. In a router, there are multiple ports, but there is a console port. So you'll connect over there. Yes. Now press, uh, yeah, leave it. <coughs> Now it has started booting, right? It will take little time to show you here. So right now what we are doing is we are checking all the devices console port. Are these consoles working fine? If yes, then only will connect it to router. But all these consoles, see guys, I have multiple devices. If I start taking individual console access, I need multiple devices and I need multiple pieces to connect, right? Like you all are sitting here, if I connect individual devices, how many pieces will be required? As much as devices you have. Is that possible all the time? No. Right. So how do we connect? We connect all these consoles to terminal server. You have terminal server somewhere, right? Uh, so we have a terminal server over there. All the consoles will be connected to terminal server. And we take access to a terminal server to jump into all the devices console. 
that's how we do. So when you see all these things from beginning, you realize how actually devices are connected in a real time. In real time, when you guys will go for any companies, right? Same way devices will be connected. You won't get individual access. You won't get physical access like this. No. You're taking remote access to terminal server through telnet, SSH, something. Through that cons uh, terminal server, you guys are jumping to all these different consoles. That's how in real time devices will be connected. Okay. Now you guys can see console has come right now. I can access the router. So your task is you'll check so IP interface brief. Check all the interfaces. Our interfaces here, we have F0 by 0, F0 by 1. So what I told you, the physical, uh, I mean, see here, physical topology which I'll be creating, right? Like this, we will create two switches. So one router's two interfaces will be connected on two switches, not on single switch. Understood? So we'll take one side R1. And that R1's one interface like F0 by 0 will be connected to one switch and F0 by 1 will be connected to other switch. That's how it will be connected. Right? Just like in the lab. As we have in our lab. And between these two switches, we'll create one trunk loop. And one switch will act as a server, another as a client. You know VTP modes, right? VTP mode by default server. And we can create it as a client so that whatever configurations we'll do on a server will synchronize on client. Right. We'll, we'll not put an, another mode. What, what is the third mode? Transparent. Tran Transparent. Transparent mode. What happens in that? It does not synchronize with your server, right? Individual configurations. Okay. Same thing. So here we are having only client and server. And we'll do main changes on the switch. And that's how devices will be connected right now. Okay. Okay. So I start testing all the devices, guys. So this router is tested right now. But still, if you want, you guys can test on it.